Greetings. Again, this is Joel Friedlander from thebookdesigner.com and authortoolkits.com. And uh, thank you for joining me today. I think this is going to be a great presentation. I'm joined today by Casey Demchak. Now, Casey uh, has written for my blog in the past. He's a very accomplished writer and a copywriter. He's been a professional copywriter for 25 years. Casey is recognized as an expert at writing highly effective promotional copy for authors, speakers, and coaches. That's why we're talking to him today. In fact, he's written marketing copy for dozens and dozens of authors who have gone on to become Amazon bestsellers, international bestsellers, and happy clients. So with that, uh, I know Casey's going to give you a little bit more background, so I'm just going to turn it over to Casey. Casey, take it away. All right. Thank you, Joel. I appreciate it. Thank you for the, the nice introduction. And I want to welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining on the, the live event. And for all of you listening to the recorded version, um, welcome aboard and glad to, to have you in. As, as Joel said, we're going we're gonna to have a lot of fun today. And uh, I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about my, uh, myself. Joel just filled in a little bit, but I've been writing marketing communication materials now for over 25 years. I've written for lots of authors, speakers, and coaches. And I'm best known for my innovative approach to creating uh, core message marketing toolkits that include a wide range of marketing materials for books, programs, and products. Like you, I'm also an author. I wrote the book, Essential Sales Writing Secrets. And I've also hosted a radio show. I was once the uh, host of the internet radio talk show, Essential Marketing Secrets. Um, and before we really get into things, I just want to give you a preview of some of the takeaways you can expect to get from this webinar today. You're going to find out what a master message marketing document is for your book. And you're going to discover how to build and organize your own marketing uh, message document. And throughout the webinar, you're going to gain insight into the many benefits of having such a document. I'm also going to share with you some copywriting secrets you can apply to all the marketing materials that you create for your book. And you're also going to hear a great about a great opportunity to learn absolutely everything I know about how to develop, shape, create, mold, and write your own master messaging document. Now, I always like to just jump right into things, so I say we just kind of hit the ground running and get right into the material today. When I talk to a lot of authors, and I've talked to a ton of them, a lot of times there's like three common problems that many of them face, and you know, some of these may apply to you. But a lot of them will say to me, Casey, you know, I'm not really sure, I've written my book, but I'm not really sure what promotional materials I need to create for my book right now. I know I need a bunch of them, but I'm not really sure which ones to tackle. And on top of that, you know, I love to write. I, I, I've written a, what I think is a really great book, but I don't know how to write promotional content. And that's true of a lot of people. You can have very competent everyday writing skills, but you may not know the subtle nuances, secrets, insights, and tex techniques that it takes to write really strong marketing content. So if that's you, you're not alone and it's no big deal, it's not that hard. I tell you one thing, by the end of this webinar, you're gonna know a lot more about writing uh, promotional content than you probably do right now. And then a lot of authors also say to me that they're not even sure when they should write their marketing pieces. That's actually a pretty good question. A lot of people just aren't clear when to start that process. What I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna present you with one solution that solves all three of these problems and also uh, helps you meet a lot of other uh, challenges that come with trying to figure out how to write good marketing materials for your book. Now, the solution is a master message document, which I call a core message marketing toolkit. Okay, so that's a real important term you're going to hear me saying over and over again today, your core message marketing toolkit. And we're going to work our way into what this really is, and it's actually very, very simple, but I want to start with giving you a very simple definition. Core Message Marketing Toolkit is a comprehensive document, usually about 15 to 20 pages, and it includes marketing copy for a collection of pro promotional materials you need to market your book. And its purpose is to serve as a master messaging document for your book. This is a slide we're gonna take a moment here and, and just kind of take a good look at this. First, I've written a lot of uh, Core Message Marketing Toolkits for several authors. No two of them are, are ever organized exactly the same, but the ones I've created typically include promotional copy um, for website pages, back cover copy, postcard copy, press release copy, sales sheet copy, 
promotional e-blasts, Amazon descriptions. You see the lo uh, list of materials here. So picture completed marketing copy for all of these different marketing uh, materials. All of these marketing materials having similar messaging. Um, they're all written in, in a voice, a, a, a similar voice, texture, messaging, all of it interconnected so that it's written in the same voice and style. And you have all these different marketing materials for your book at your fingertips in one 15 to 20 page document. And when you have that, you have a core message marketing toolkit. Now, having all those marketing materials written, pre-written in one document gives you a lot of advantages when you start marketing your book. It assures that you're going to have strong and consistent marketing messages about your book across all of your marketing channels. And that's really important today because there are so many marketing channels. We still have, you know, all the old school kind of traditional, traditional marketing channels. You have postcards you may print out sales sheets of course you got your back cover copy but these days we have a lot of digital marketing channels as well you have um your website all your website pages eblast you've got social media tweets and blurbs and you know you're going to want to have messaging for when you're participating in online forms so you want to have very consistent strong messaging about your book this is really crucial for two big reasons Number one, this is one of my sayings, repetition of your, of your message builds the reputation of your book. In marketing, for people to absorb your marketing message about your book, they need to hear it more than once. They really need to hear it about six or seven times before it really starts to make an impression on them and they, and they really start, it starts becoming ingrained in them and it becomes memorable. It becomes something that when they hear it, they, they immediately link a, a message to your book. So your marketing materials need to be very consistent in voice and message and style across all of your marketing channels so that you really build the reputation of your book. And to do this, um, my second point here, for people to focus on your message, your message must be focused. That's why it's so crucial to create a, a core message marketing toolkit for your book because throughout all of your marketing materials that I outlined for you, your messaging must be very consistent in voice and style, tone and texture. Now, to bring this into kind of the real world for you, I've just given you a nice definition of what a core message marketing toolkit is. I've talked about the different types of marketing materials that I include in one. I want to share with you a case story of a wonderful woman uh, that I wrote a core, core message marketing toolkit for, and her name is Mary L. McCarthy. And she wrote a great book called Journaling Power. And Mary has a very interesting story. Mary was a Fortune 100 uh, business consultant and she began to struggle with multiple sclerosis, MS. And it really kind of curtailed her, her, her consulting career. And she had to go through therapy and, and she started taking some medication. And Mary's right-handed and she kind of lost um, a lot of the function in the right side of her body. She got very kind of uh, fed up with, with um, taking medication and going through kind of the traditional uh, medical modalities. So she began hearing about how expressive writing there was some, there was medical information that said expressive writing could really help heal your body. So she taught herself how to write left-handed and writing handwritten journals. She began writing about her thoughts and feelings. And lo and behold, she began to experience a lot of recovery. She began to regain a lot of function on the right side of her body. So she dug into this and she wrote a wonderful book called Journaling Power because she wanted to help a lot of other people. Mary completed her book and she had what I called a messaging challenge. Mary wanted to make a, a worldwide splash with her book. She wanted to go big on social media. She wanted to touch as many people as possible. She wanted to impact the lives of, of people who really needed help. She wanted to spread the word to the whole world about journaling power. And she was very determined to do this. And she had written a great book, but like a lot of you, writing marketing copy, and how to organize all of it and, and, and execute all of it wasn't really her uh, area of expertise. So she actually found out about me through Joel, uh, through, through his website. She read one of my blog posts and contacted me. And we had a nice chat and realized that her solution was to develop a core message marketing toolkit. And within it, we included full website copy for her book. We wrote a 30-second uh, elevator pitch. We wrote e-blast and sales page copy. 
back cover and Amazon description copy, sales sheet copy, postcard copy, press release copy, media speaking points. We also included other materials in there that I haven't listed. I think we also wrote video script copy. So again, we wanted all of these marketing materials pre-written in one 15 to 20 page document. We wanted all of the messaging to be very consistent and cohesive and have a uniform voice and message to it uh, so that Mary would feel very, very confident about marketing her book, Journaling Power. Now, what I wanna do here for the next few slides, I wanna take you inside of Mary's core message marketing toolkit. I want you to see the copy that I wrote for her so that you get a real feel for what this is and how simple it is and how powerful it can be. For example, this, were, and what I'm gonna show you, just some snapshots of the copy we created for Mary. This is copy from her e-blast that I wrote for her. You can see up top we have an email subject line and then some alternative email subject lines and email text. And we have the big headline there, tap into the ultimate self-healing tool. The secret to healing is right at your fingertips, literally. And then we have a nice testimonial. And then we start getting into some of the uh, e-blast copy itself. And then next, I want, you know, so think, take a good look at that and some of the material we covered there, some of the, the headline treatment. And then we created, uh, we rolled into creating an Amazon description for Mary's book. And right away, you can see some similarities. For Amazon description, we kind of used a similar headline treatment. Discover the ultimate self-healing tool. Heal, grow, transform your life. And I'll read a little bit of the copy to you. Journaling power teaches you how to put the ultimate holistic self-healing tool right at your fingertips. Journaling. Mary L. McCarthy was able to mitigate the debilitating symptoms of multiple sclerosis, ditch her prescription drugs by tapping into the proven power of expressive writing. Then I have another benefit-driven paragraph about uh, the book, along with some benefit-driven bu benefit bullet points. Some of the takeaways you get from her book, you'll learn how you can reduce stress, overcome illness, heal emotional wounds, resolve inner conflicts, conquer limiting beliefs, and more. So this was her Amazon description, and then also we wanted to create some postcard copy because everywhere Mary went, she wouldn't be able to tell people about her book. So it just makes only makes sense for an author to have postcard copy uh, for your book. You can give out postcards anywhere. So this is a snapshot of the front side of the postcard copy we created for Mary. And as you can see, we have similar cohesive messaging and voice in our headline, discover the ultimate self-healing tool. It's right at your fingertips, literally journaling power. And then we have a little uh, testimonial from Peggy McCall, who's very well known in the industry. And then we have that tagline again, heal, grow, transform your life. So just looking at these few little snippets of marketing materials uh, that I created for Mary, you're already seeing how the kind of repetitiveness of the message is kind of driving home her main benefits. And as people see her different marketing materials, her messaging is really going to start sinking in. This is a, a little snapshot of some sales sheet copy we created together. Again, uh, we kind of a little twist on the headline treatment. Discover the ultimate self-healing tool. It's right at your fingertips, literally. Then as a subhead, I have heal, grow, transform your life. That's kind of a, we just keep repeating that message. And then uh, some of the body copy. Journaling power teaches you how to put the ultimate holistic self-healing tool right at your fingertips. Mary L. McCarthy was able to mitigate the debilitating symptoms of multiple sclerosis and ditch her prescription drugs by tapping into the proven power of expressive writing. Through her moving story, you'll discover how pen to paper journaling can lead to self-growth and life-changing transformation. You'll gain insight into numerous medical studies that prove journaling unleashes an internal healing agent that literally gives you the power to, and then I went on to uh, list some of the benefits of the book, but Again, this builds on the previous copy we wrote for her other marketing materials. And you're starting to see how it can all really tie together in a powerful way. Even with the press release, I created some press release copy, which is, uh, you know, a PR piece. It's not, you can't make a, a press release too salesy. Um, you have to write it more in a new style, a, kind of a who, what, where, when, and why type style um, to go in newspapers and other uh, news sites. But I was still able to con uh, convey it's very similar messaging, give it a similar, similar texture and feel as her other marketing pieces and uh, reiterate some of the key benefits. So you can see from press release to, to e-blast, postcard, sales page copy, her messaging was very persistent and consistent so that whether it was for print or in a publication or online, her messaging was very persistent and consistent 
And this really starts building the reputation of her book through that repetition. And then lastly, I created some uh, interview speaking points for Mary because we created digital marketing materials. We created traditional print marketing materials. But when Mary was going to do interview uh, on podcasts or on interview, uh, media interviews, when she spoke about her book, when she, when she would speak, we wanted everything she said to also tie into the print and digital marketing materials that people would be exposed to. So I created within her core message toolkit some interview speaking points so she can have them by her side when she was being interviewed on the phone or for a podcast so that when she was speaking about her book, it tied into all her other stuff, which really just reiterated her main selling point, her main messages. And again, repetition of message builds reputation of book. So this gives you a strong glimpse into what a core message marketing toolkit looks, looks like on the inside and how all the marketing pieces are interwoven, sharing similar voice, message, and texture. And the end result for Mary was she became an international bestseller. And I can tell you about Mary, that's not, she's not gonna stop there. She's gonna keep spreading the word. She's very passionate about her material. And um, with all the marketing documents we, we created, she's very, always very, very confident about spreading the word. I actually get her email um, every Saturday morning and she writes her own emails, but I could see where uh, little snippets and, and one-liners and buzz phrases and things she pulls from her marketing messaging toolkit to build new email campaigns for herself. So it always makes me very proud to, uh, to see that for her. Now you've heard me talk about some of the benefits of having a core message marketing toolkit, but I want to delve into some, some of the reasons even more. And I want to give you eight big reasons why you want to develop a core message marketing toolkit for your book. Again, just picture, you know, if you're in Mary's shoes and you've got this about 20 page document full of marketing materials that have a very consistent voice and message to them, you're going to feel very confident and excited about marketing your book because you've got this wide range of marketing materials completed, written. You don't have to rush around writing anything at the last minute. You're going to feel very confident and excited about marketing your book because you have strong, consistent promotional statements being made across all your marketing channels, whether the traditional print or if you're being interviewed in podcasts. And this really increases the chances of making a positive impact on your target audience because the more they hear your message, the more it sinks in. And the more it sinks in, the more memorable it becomes. And that's really going to help your voice and your message stand out in a very crowded marketplace. And a big thing here is when you have a core message marketing toolkit, you know, I wrote a bunch of materials, as you saw from Mary, but um, for example, I didn't write an advertorial for her. Now, an advertorial is typically about an 800 page article that functions as an article and an ad about your book. And sometimes in a publication, you can get an advertorial put in. So let's say you've got your core message marketing toolkit. And you hear from maybe a publisher or something of, of a magazine, a trade magazine or something that you can get, get your, your advertorial in there, uh, 800 words at half price, but they need your copy within 48 hours. Well, a lot of authors might kind of not panic, but like kind of go into stress mode and rush around trying to write their 800 word advertorial. But if you get your core message marketing toolkit in your hand with all those pre-written marketing materials, you may not have an advertorial pre-written in there. But as you can see from the samples I showed you of Mary's materials, it would be very easy for her to get into her core message marketing toolkit, pull some copy out, uh, rearrange some copy and, and put together an 800 word advertorial, probably take her about an hour. She'd be very relaxed about it. So when you have a core message marketing toolkit, it makes it very easy because when you're an author marketing your book, you're going to be hit by unexpectedly good marketing opportunities, but you have very short amount of time to uh, to take advantage of them. But when you have a core message marketing toolkit, you have ample copy to draw from. You can put together additional marketing materials on very short notice. So you can see that core message marketing toolkits, they really are kind of the secret weapon you need to create a memorable, positive image for your book. Because when you, when you have very consistent messaging, very strong messaging across all your marketing channels, people are gonna, uh, are, you're, 
your marketing materials will be more memorable simply because people can remember hearing your message because they've heard it very in a very consistent way many times. And that enables you to touch your target audience on, a, on an emotional level. You can really start, especially if you have well-developed messaging that has kind of an emotional texture to it, and you touch your audience with it many, many times, and your messaging is very consistent, really get to uh, hit people on an emotional level. And that's what gets motivates people to buy books and, and other products. So when you have all this going for you, it really enhances the selling power of your marketing materials because you have a very well-woven little machine in place that you can keep moving forward with, and it really helps your marketing efforts. And that raises your book's market awareness to levels that exceed your expectations. So I'm telling you right now, a lot of people marketing books are just kind of making up their marketing materials as they go. And I've got this message here at the bottom of this particular slide, and I don't even think I need to say it, but... Working from a core message marketing toolkit is a much stronger strategy than developing your messaging on a make it up as you go basis. So when you've completed your book, you don't want to, okay, I'm going to write a postcard because I'm going to a conference and now I'm going to another event. I think I need a sales sheet. I think I'll create that. And then maybe oh, I should create a video script. If you create your, your messaging materials on a make it up as you go basis over a period of months, when you get to maybe month three of writing materials, you're gonna look back at what you wrote three months earlier, and most likely the messaging is gonna be out of whack. It's not gonna be consistent. It will have morphed and changed over time. And that's not good because again, repetition of message builds reputation of your book. So working from a core message marketing toolkit, to pre-developing all those marketing materials and, and giving them a very strong voice and message and very consistent texture is much better than making things up and just kind of winging it as you go. Now, whenever I talk about core message marketing toolkits, I, I get asked a, a lot of questions. And so I thought I would tackle a few of them in advance. And one of them I get is, you know, when I write, when should I write promotional uh, materials that go in my core message marketing toolkit? It's actually a good question. Um, there is no one way to do it. Now, it's very normal. I think most people kind of write, begin writing all their marketing materials after they've written their book. And you can definitely do that. However, you can also start working on this while you're writing your book, because while you've got, when you're in book writing mode, you're thinking a lot about your book. And if you know you're gonna create your core message marketing toolkit, you can have a little side document open and uh, start writing those materials as you're writing your book, because maybe some headlines will pop into your head or or marketing phrases will pop into your head. So you can also start writing this, you know, in parallel with writing your book. A lot of people do it that way. I also worked on a core message marketing toolkit a few years ago for Peggy McCall, who is a, a New York Times bestselling author. And we did something very interesting. Peggy asked me to write her, um, her kit before she wrote her book. I think the book was uh, The Million Dollar Author. And she asked me to work on some marketing messaging for the book. And I said, well, Peggy, could you give me a copy of the book? She said, well, I haven't written it yet. And I saw well, it was kind of fun. So I wrote her messaging uh, toolkit for her before she wrote the book. And uh, later on, she told me that some of the stuff I had written in the marketing toolkit actually inspired ideas for her to add additional content to the book. So there's no one way to handle it. Um, but I think it's very important that you do it, whether it's before, during or after your book. You definitely want to create core message marketing toolkit. Another question I get asked is, can I update my core message marketing toolkit as I move on down the road with your marketing campaign? Because, of course, when you have a book, um, you, you can market it forever. So I get asked, you know, once I've completed my core message marketing toolkit and I'm marketing my book, is it OK to change it? Well, of course it is, because here's what's going to happen. You can have a very well developed core message marketing toolkit and, you know, you, you're use, utilizing the marketing materials, you know, for, through traditional means digital marketing channels. And what's going to happen is you're going to get some fans. People are going to buy your book. You're going to start getting feedback about your book. Some people may tell you about some really specific benefits they got from your book that you never thought of. You may get a handful of people saying, you know, I got this out of your book and went, wow, I didn't really think that would be uh, such a big deal in the book. But you find out that there's benefits of the book to the book to your audience that you had never really even thought about. So you can definitely, I'd say, you know, every quarter or every six months, go in and tweak your messaging platform. And uh, you don't have to do a big overhaul, but I call it, call it doing an audit. You can do a simple audit of your marketing toolkit and just kind of update your messaging based on feedback that you've gotten from your fans. 
Now, here's another question I get. Casey, how do I write all the promotional materials in my uh, core message marketing toolkit? Now, it doesn't have to be something that you stress and strain about. Um, that's the big thing. Now, I could spend um, all day telling you how to write all the promotional materials. That would take a long time, but um, I just want to make the point that if, if you've written a book, it tells me that you have competent everyday writing skills. You just don't, may not know the subtle nuances of writing uh, various marketing materials. You can definitely learn that. It's just a matter of learning some formulas, some techniques, and a few theories and things like that, and you can uh, move forward and write, write a lot of good marketing materials. Now, I don't have time today to teach you how to write everything you need to know for all your marketing pieces, but what I can do, I wanna share with you five big copywriting techniques that you can apply to every marketing piece you write. So you've heard me talk about writing sales sheets, postcards, video script, website copy, e-blast copy. There are some kind of universal techniques that are applicable to pretty much everything that you write for your book, all your marketing materials. So we're gonna go over five big ones that I think are very important. The first one is to establish a consistent voice for all your marketing, for your marketing campaign and stick with it. And of course, this is good. The, the, the voice you choose for your marketing materials is gonna have a lot to do with what your book is about. So your, your marketing campaign, the voice of your campaign, it might emanate authority or wisdom or humor or passion or mystery. I mean, if you've written kind of a self-help book, maybe wisdom, you, you, your marketing materials have kind of a wisdomful voice to them. If you've written a very humorous novel, of course, your marketing materials want to be funny. Um, if you've written a, 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 book, a mystery book, you know, you want to have a voice that's full of intrigue and mystery. If you've written a romance novel, you know, of course, you're going to want to have a more romantic tone to it. I'll tell you a funny story. I wrote a marketing, uh, core message marketing toolkit for an author from New Jersey a few years ago. And um, he called himself a recovering soprano. He was actually in the mob in New Jersey. And uh, he got out of it and he wanted to help other wise guys go a new direction in their life. So he wrote a self-help book, a self-development book. The funny part was it didn't have the typical self-help type of nurturing language because his audience was a bunch of former wise guys. So he wrote the whole thing in kind of New Jersey street language. And uh, so when we're working on his mar marketing materials, he wanted his marketing materials to have that same tone and texture. So there was a lot of, a lot of uh, blue language in his marketing toolkit, but it worked really well. He went on to become a best-selling author. His book was called 10 Stacks, I believe it was. And so that, so the point here is, is to make, pick out a good voice for your marketing campaign and stick through, stick with it through all of your marketing materials. Now, the next thing here we want to do, uh, the next big tip, point number two, is when you write book marketing materials, and this is an important point, you want to focus on takeaways. Okay, you want to detail what readers will get out of your book versus what your book is about. And there's kind of a fine line there. But when you write marketing materials for your book, a lot of people, they just start talking about what their book is about as opposed to what the reader is going to get out of the book. Remember, people buy your book to get something out of it, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. So I'm giving you examples here of some copy I wrote for a nonfiction book. I'm going to follow that up with uh, something I wrote for a novel. Well, I want to give you an example. Again, this is from Mary's book. This is a little blurb I wrote for her book, Journaling Power. And as I read this to you, just pay attention to the fact that what I'm, in a subtle way, I'm telling you what you're going to get out of the book, as opposed to strictly telling you what the, what the book is about. But you'll get, you'll get both points. Here we go. Journaling Power teaches you how to put the ultimate self-healing tool right at your fingertips. Journaling. Through Mary McCarthy's moving personal story, you'll discover how pen to paper journaling leads to self-growth and life-changing transformation. You'll also learn that numerous medical studies prove journaling literally unleashes a healing agent that empowers your life in ways you've never imagined. So that little blurb right there tells you a lot about what Mary's book is about, but really it's telling you what you're gonna get out of the book. So that's just a, a very subtle writing technique when you write marketing materials is focus on takeaways. Now here's an example of how you can do that same thing when you're writing marketing copy for a novel because a lot of times when I'll tell um, authors to focus on takeaways they say but Casey I've written a novel I have a, a piece of fiction and it doesn't sound like 
you know, that, that little tip applies to novels, but it does, okay, and here's why. Good marketing copy for a novel is distinctive, or it becomes distinct when it focuses on not just the plot, but the thematic elements. Because remember, a lot of when I when I read a marketing copy written by some novelists, they just start doing a summary of the plot, and um, you want to give your marketing copy more texture and depth than that. One way you can do that is focus on thematic elements or emotions that you're going to stir up in your reader. Because remember, people don't. You know, for example, people who read Stephen King books, they read a lot of them. Why? Not just to discover Stephen's latest plot. They want to get scared. They want to. They want to be thrilled. They want to be brought out on edge. They want to stir up that emotion. People who read romance novels, they tend to read a lot of them. Why? They want to stir up those emotions. They. They. You know. They want to be taken back to a simpler time, young love, that kind of thing. Um, people who read CIA thrillers, they want to go. They. They're into intrigue and mystery. They want to go behind the curtain into the, the inner workings of the shadow government and that kind of thing. Now this particular book here is a wonderful, a wonderful novel written by a uh, Kimberly Waldron called *The Butterflies*, and it's about a serial killer in a Texas town. And of course, it's got a really nice plot. But when I worked on uh, Kimberly's Core Message Marketing Toolkit, I really wanted to engage people by writing about a lot of the thematic elements that are woven through the book. So when I opened up her website sales page, you know, I opened up with "Would you morph into someone you're not if it meant getting everything you want?" Then I have a little subhead there, dare to look behind the curtain. Within it, everyone's mind is a curtain, and you never really know someone until you've been behind it. So how well do you really know your friends, your family, or your lover? How well do you know yourself? In her new psychological thriller, The Butterflies, author Kimberly Waldron forces you to peel off the mask you present to the world and cope with the reality of your own imperfections. You'll be challenged to confront the darker thoughts that knife their way through your soul. Thoughts not even your closest friends would suspect you have. Then I have a subhead, living in a tangled web of questions. How much are you willing to change and reinvent yourself to get what you think you need to become better, richer, happier, or more powerful? So we get into those thematic elements that kind of engage people and, and we're telling them how, what emotions and thoughts we're gonna stir up within them before we really get into the plot. And then further on in the sales page, I do get into the plot, but. This is a way if you're writing a novel and you want your marketing copy to have a little more depth and texture and meaning to it. This is how you can focus on takeaways when working on a marketing copy for a novel. Another thing you want to do with all your marketing copy is make it what I call at a glance friendly. That's my dog Ranger. He's very at a glance friendly. He's actually laying out in the hallway right now. And um, so I thought I'd use him in a, as an example of at a glance friendly. And if you think about all the marketing materials, including the one I just showed you, they all have a, a few things in common. I utilize a lot of subheads, headlines, very brief paragraphs, bullet points, and a lot of open white space. Before people read your copy, they're going to they're going to just take a look at it, and then maybe they'll skim it a little. Then, if you're lucky, they'll read it for more detail. So to get people to pay attention to your copy, it has to be very easy on the eye, at a glance friendly. Um, it's kind of a weird psychological thing. When people open a book, they're, they're, they're perfectly fine with seeing paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. But when they look at marketing copy, they want it to look very quick and easy to read. Otherwise, they'll tune out. So here's an example of at a glance friendly copy. And it looks like a lot of the copy I've shown you already today. Again, this is for Mary's book. And I'm not going to get into reading any of it or getting into the detail of the copy. All I want you to do for a moment is just take a look at the copy and uh, see how easy on the eye it looks. You'll see that I've got, you know, there's my headline. Then I've just got a one sentence paragraph followed by a sentence that I've set off by itself and centered it. And um, a second two line, the next two lines are just set there on their own. Then I have some benefit driven bullet points that are very sharp and concise. And I, I always, a lot of times for uh, benefit-driven bullet points, I'll put check marks because they look a little more dynamic. It's just something else to liven up the copy. And then again, the next paragraph is just two lines. And then I have a, a benefit-driven statement that's centered and set off by itself. And then finally, one final line without any nasty side effects. And that's just kind of centered and by itself. Now, imagine if I had written that copy as like two dark, chunky paragraphs. It wouldn't look nearly as inviting to read. So a lot of people might not 
read it. But in this at-a-glance friendly style, there's a much greater chance that people are going to actually read your copy, which of course is what you want them to do. Big tip number four, headlines. I always tell people that your headlines are your most valuable real estate and marketing. People say to me, Casey, what is the one thing I can do to immediately improve, immediately improve my existing marketing copy? And I tell them, write better headlines. And headlines, a lot of times people spend too much time on them, actually, even though they're very important. But think about it. Headlines have two simple objectives. They need to grab and engage your audience and motivate them to read the copy below the headline. If you write a headline that gets people's attention and motivates them to read the copy beneath the headline, guess what? You've written a great headline. Your headlines don't have to be zippy, catchy, witty, clever, or sexy. Um, they just need to get attention and motivate people to uh, take the next step, which is reading the body copy beneath them. And I'm going to give you an example here. I, there's all kinds of techniques uh, that I can teach you about headline writing, but I'm going to teach you a real simple one here that I use quite a bit. I call this the benefit-driven headline sequence. This, these are some headlines that I included in the sales page for uh, a book I wrote marketing copy for a couple of years ago. It was a book that really the, the whole thing behind the book was how to, how to blend the spiritual side of your life with the business side of your life and kind of intertwine the two into one. So if you look at the series of headlines, they're all benefit-driven headlines and they, they, tell, they tell you some takeaways you'll get out of the book. I'll read them real quick. Embrace the book that will transform how our culture unites business with soul. Discover the power of integrating myths, science, spirituality, and business. Manifest financial abundance and heartfelt professional relationships. Honor your desire to make your passion your profession. Buy this book today and receive hundreds of dollars in free bonus gifts with your purchase. If all anybody did was skim those headlines before they read any body copy, they would have a very good idea of what this book is about and what some of the main takeaways are. So I deliberately set up this headline sequence knowing that people might just skim it. And I wanted them to get a cohesive selling message if all they did was skim the headlines. And I think I did a good job of that. So you can, you can utilize this technique when writing a marketing copy for your book. Because again, people are going to glance at your copy, then they're going to skim headlines, and then with any luck, they'll actually read the body copy. Big tip number five. Write confident call to action lines and special offer lines. A lot of times when I review marketing copy for authors, I'll notice that they neglect to tell people what to do next. Every marketing piece you create should always tell people what exactly what to do next. And you want to tell them what to do with a confident voice. You want to be very certain with your language. And you want to avoid passive terms such as if you're interested, something like that. You know, assume people are interested and be very confident with your language. You don't have to be overly salesy um, or pushy, but you want to be certain and confident. And also a, a great technique to use with limited offers is with special offers is to is to have a time limit, which which creates urgency. It gets people to act sooner rather than later. And of course, if you offer bonuses that are going to disappear after the limited time, gets people to act even sooner. And I'm going to give you a very basic example of this. This is a little special offer copy I wrote for a wonderful book called Make Big Happen. This is, this is my favorite business book. I wrote marketing copy for this, written by a guy named Mark Moses, wonderful guy. This is a very simple call to action line. As you can see, it's very at a glance friendly, which we always want to do. But it just says, order Make Big Happen by midnight tonight and receive this special bonus gift from Mark Moses, the audio version of Make Big Happen. Then I have a very succinct description of... Uh, why you want to get the audio book and then and to give this some context was the special was you can order his book and while you're waiting for the hard copy to arrive you can immediately download the audio version so i have a little description about the book again those benefit driven check marks little testimonial and then we wind it up with plus you'll receive hundreds of dollars worth of additional bonus gifts order make big happen and that order make big happen would be a clickable link. So you can see there, I'm telling people what to do next, but I'm not being pushy or salesy or too splashy, which is very direct and very competent. Now, I have many, many more insights and secrets to share with you about uh, core message marketing toolkits. Obviously I can't go on and on today forever, but we're gonna tell you a little bit more about how you can you can get some of these uh, insights and secrets from me and with uh, that Joel's going to help me tell you more about that so Joel back over to you
Yeah, that's uh, that's fantastic, uh, Casey. That was really, really interesting seeing how you actually put these toolkits together. And <clears throat> if you got nothing else, if I got nothing else from Casey's presentation except the idea that when you start writing about your book, you shouldn't actually describe the book. That's not the point. That that's that's a million dollar takeaway. Trust me, because that that is the central idea of all marketing. We don't talk about the product; we talk about the benefit to the buyer. So, look, this is a very powerful idea that Casey is talking about. When you isolate your core message and turn that into the central part. Uh, focus of all of your marketing materials, you're going to have a much stronger marketing presentation going out into the world when you launch your book or you go to promote your book. The problem is Casey's an expert on this and we are not. We don't know how to do that. So I asked Casey if he could put his expertise into a product that we could make available to you. Casey, let's flip the slide. And that's what we did. We created the Core Message Marketing Toolkit. And it takes all of these ideas that Casey's been talking about for the last 45 minutes and puts them into a usable format for you. He goes uh, into a lot of detail in this guidebook, which is part of the Core Message Marketing Toolkit. And the guidebook alone runs 86 pages. He's going to tell you uh, exactly how to actualize these ideas with your books. And I love the fact that Casey made a point of pointing out that this works for both fiction and nonfiction authors because we always get that question. And in the guide, there are lots and lots of examples of exactly how this works. Now, I love that because when I see, you know, it's one thing to read, well, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. But then if you put an example in front of me of how that actually works out for a real author with a real book, then, ah, I understand. Now I understand. So I think those examples are really good. And we've also included some other materials that are going to be very helpful to you when you sit down to write marketing copy for your book.